Okay, so to make that work, you it works actually quite nicely. You put it in and you just go around like that and it just seamlessly goes through with the wrench tool. And that's all I'm doing. And they say make it tight, so I'm making it tight. Great, and I'll do the same thing with the other one. The key thing here to remember is it does take a little bit of finagling to get this piece to initially thread, but once you get it in, it, it, it it's pretty seamless. And remember, this is the farther pedal based on the way I have it set up, and oh, came out. So let me try it again. Be back. Okay, sorry about that. I got it this time. And remember, clockwise. So you go and you're going to tie it tight. And you're gonna do it clockwise. So, my sincerest apologies. Righty tighty, right? Or am I loosening it? That's counterclockwise. I'm loosening it. I'm gonna focus. Can't teach an old dog like me new tricks. Do it right clockwise. Here, let me do it this way. I'm actually loosening it, loosening it as I'm trying to show you. So the right way is to go like this. You tighten it. You're gonna go clockwise, which is this way. You tighten. And you go around clockwise. We're doing the right pedal. See, I'm going clockwise. And there you go, and you tighten it, and it is going to be really tight. I'll be back. So we did it. So the pedals are on nice and tight. Everything looks really great, and we're good. Now, for step five, which I've already done, because I guess I'm impetuous, but it says install the battery into the display. And there's a door, and everyone knows how to do this, but... There's a door on the back of the display. It snaps in and out. The latch is at the top. Pry the top of the door open. Remove any plastic wrapping, which is the battery had um, plastic wrapping around it. You do the right polarity and it's all good. And we know that the battery works. Now, tips for using the cycle. This is where the fun part comes in. So what you do is you have the cycle such that Here's how it works. I'm done. I'm gonna have it face me this way, and you'll note that that's about it. Now, I could have it here, but this is gonna be under my desk. Now, a couple points that I wanted to make. I'm gonna go through some tips for using the desk cycle, and then I have my notes that I wrote here to make this an interesting blog. You can purchase a bigger display if you want to have it just located here. But I instead decided that I would rather just take this and just put it on my on my desk. Because then I can watch what I'm doing. And just in case I forget, so I'm going to say it now, you can actually go to the internet, their website, and plug in information and get a lot of data on calories and a whole bunch of things. So couple things they want to tell you. The first is, this is the how to pedal. When you pedal, you want to pedal such that, so I'm putting my left one in, okay, and whether you go left or right, it doesn't matter, and I'm having this on the, right now it's on eight, which is the highest setting, and I'm going to move this down to the lowest setting, one, because it's already a thousand degrees in here, and you can change these straps if you want to. But let me just prove to you that it works. All right, so here we go. And we're off. And you'll see, here we go. Speed, it says 12 miles per hour. Going great. Uh, distance 13, distance 14 meters. So 28 seconds, it looks like, 29, 30. 2.3 calories, which they say is wrong unless you're on the higher speeds. 13 meters, it's scanned, so it goes through all of them for you. Again, time 41 seconds, speed 13.9 meters. Now, let me put this down. 
If you'll notice, what you heard there is um, the bottom is scraping. This is meant to go under the desk. It's got a nice form factor. So what they say is, and I'm going to tell you this in, as we go through, how to pedal correctly. Whether you buy the $500 one and throw away your money, which is available uh, from the, uh, the Iowa site, or you buy this one that'll last forever, you have to be careful because you, you have to remember to keep your, your heels up. Otherwise, you're going to scrape the bottom of the floor. So normally when you're doing an exercise bike, you'll push out, out this way. What they recommend is you start pushing down, down at 1 o'clock. So here, 1 o'clock, if you look at the side view, is right here. So when you're turning around, you push down here so that you're not going to get any movement. And you'll notice there isn't any movement here as I'm going um, at, at the resistance of one. So the most important advice we can give you is to pedal downward. Now, look how quiet that is. Now let me turn up the resistance a little bit. And see there's an arrow here. One. Let's go to two. A little bit harder. And I'm move that back. This will keep the bike in place if you pedal downward, and that's literally what I'm doing. I'm putting the pressure down at 1 on each side, 1 o'clock, and then you relieve the pressure once you get down to the bottom, remembering to keep your heels off the side. I'm scraping, but, you know, I'm getting used to it. Start pushing down on the pedal when the pedal arm is at the 1 o'clock position, just past the highest pedal position. Stop applying force when the pedal is at the lowest position or at six o'clock. We just talked about that. You should pedal downward throughout this range as shown by the arrows in the picture. Point your toes forward on the downward stroke and that's what I did. I pointed my toes forward on the downward stroke keeping the heel up so that it doesn't hit the floor. You should pedal downward throughout this range as shown by the arrows in the picture. Point your toes forward in the downward stroke. It keeps your heels from hitting the floor. Now, these are other caveats. I'm going to take this out, and it's kind of cool. Look how my slippers and my super feet, so I don't get plantar fasciitis, look how the slippers stuck to the apparatus. I mean, this is awesome. So that was cool. Now, start out slow. Listen to your body. This is all extra workout. So what they're saying is, Start out with a minimum resistance level and pedal the bike at 10 to 15 um, miles per hour. I think I said meters, but they're saying it's MPH, so that's going to be miles per hour, and that'll be speed over there. This will give you time to get used to pedaling downward. For those of you who don't bike regularly, it will also give you a chance to get your muscles to get used to riding the bike, and then you increase resistance as you go. Now, a couple more caveats, and it's important to say this. You want to keep your upper body still. Keeping your body still makes it easy to focus on your work. You're going to be working and riding. This is not to... Re this is not to uh, get in the way of work. It's supposed to supplement work and increase your concentration. So please remember that as well. Pedal with your legs, not your body. Don't rock from side to side. And pedaling downward makes it easier to keep your body still. Sit up straight. Don't slouch. Sitting up straight while using the desk cycle will, keep, will help strengthen your core and it's good for your spine. To have your back supported, you may want to choose a lumbar support. I got one for cheap. Um, they sell them everywhere. And that's because in order to allow for the downward motion, you, you need to sit up straight so you're not going to be able to lean back in your chair. Good ergonomics is important at the workplace anyway. I never sit back, but especially to help remind you, a good lumbar support, I like the ones with memory foam, but you don't necessarily have to have those. They're a little more expensive, maybe something you might want to consider. And then what they do here is they say, extend your legs. When the pedals are at their farthest point, you still want to have a little bit. So here's your upper leg and here's your lower leg. At 25 degrees, you still want to have your leg bent just a little bit. Um, and then www.deathcycle.com, that's the how to use the menu button. If your knees hit your desk, uh, what I did was I got rid of the keyboard from under it, but they say you can do a couple things like lower your chair. This can lower your knees by several inches, or you can point your toes upward 
on the upward pedal stroke, a whole bunch of things that you can do. And this is also available at your um, site. Now, while typing, they say that you want to keep the resistance low if you want to type and get work done. And they say keep the setting at three or less for most people and be comfortable. I completely agree with this. Yes, you can go up to eight if you want to. Three is here. Keep it real, my friends. Keep it real. Where can you use the bike? At your desk, on the couch, or in a comfortable chair. Use it while working, watching TV, reading a book on the phone, playing video games, anything you want to do. And then we told you how to uh, take care of the resistance. And then we've got the online calorie calculator, which is deskcycle.com, caloriecalculator.html, and that kind of helps you as well. Um, the tether, I don't know if we showed you the tether. We'll do the tether here. So that's if you have a situation where you have a wood floor and you have a roller chair, and I have that too. So here's your tether. So what you do is you take out the Velcro, and it's just, it just basically a Velcro strap, and you're going to strap it under here. So again, it's going to be under the device, and then that's going to go around the bottom of the chair. They say that most people do not need the tether, and so let me just tell you, I'm using the tether because of the fact that I think it's important to do so, because I feel that that keeps you solid with the bike. I have a wood floor, and for me, it just makes sense to do so for safety purposes. Um, if you have a carpet, you really don't need it. It's a heavy machine. How do you do it? You position the bike in front of your chair. You sit in your chair and pedal the bike. When you have the right length, you position the Velcro strap as, as shown below. Root under the frame, the Velcro, Velcro loop is shown. You keep the strap as low as possible. You pedal the bike and make sure it's correct, and then you're done. And they also say you can get rid of the excess if you wish. They show you how to remove the pedal straps. That's up to you. I say keep the pedal straps. Again, safety, safety, safety. They um, keep it available uh, for maintenance if you need it, but the thing lasts forever because it's all magnetic. I had a rower, uh, still do, and mag these magnetic devices, they last forever because the resistance is a magnet. Final thoughts. Uh, we talked about um, other options. What you can do if you want to, and I think it's important to state this is, let's say you want to have upper body support. Put this device on a table, okay, and use it with your hands. And all of a sudden, you're using your arms and you're working your upper body. So for those of you who have arthritis and need a way to exercise and don't want to create a lot of noise, you put this baby on a table, you use the resistance for your arms, and you're exercising and you're good to go. Don't waste your money on $3,000 machines when you can spend $150. My point, my friends, is there's no excuse not to exercise and be healthy. Not at www.michaelaronsonmd.com. Um, another thing that some people do is they count their steps because they want to get their steps in. Now, I have today, how many do I have? 7,309 steps. If you want to, you can put your pedometer on your shoe and you will get credit for steps. That will work. I'm suggesting you don't do it. This is low intensity. Walking is low intensity, but this should be above and beyond. If you want to include it, feel free. This is your deal, your body, your health. Put the pedometer on there and count it as steps. I try to do my 10,000 in addition to this, and this is all added bonus. So that I wanted to discuss. And then the final thing is, please consider viewing my Fitbit um, uh, I think it's CSX pedometer blog. Oh, I can just tell you right now I'm wearing it. CSX, which is a $2250 pedometer. For the cost of a $140 Fitbit, you can get this. So maybe get this and get a $22 pedometer and consider value and use your money accordingly with respect to value. And we'll go from there. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a long um, Periscope podcast, but I think very, very well worth it. Here's the final product. Enjoy it. Okay, so to make that work, 
you it works actually quite nicely. You put it in and you just go around like that and it just seamlessly goes through with the wrench tool. And that's all I'm doing. And they say make it tight, so I'm making it tight. Great. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. The key thing here to remember is it does take a little bit of finagling to get this piece to initially thread. But once you get it in, it, it, it it's pretty seamless. And remember, this is the farther pedal based on the way I have it set up. And, oh, came out. So let me try it again. Be back. Okay, sorry about that. I got it this time. And remember, clockwise. So you go and you're gonna tie it tight and you're gonna do it clockwise. So my sincerest apologies. Righty tidy, right? Or am I loosening it? That's counterclockwise. I'm loosening it. I'm gonna focus. Can't teach an old dog like me new tricks. But do it right clockwise. Here, let me do it this way. I'm actually loosening it.